Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are doing Crash Your Stash. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial and I'm going to use things that are laying around in my studio. So I pulled these gel prints that are on deli paper for another project that went a totally different way. So I, so I really love that pink and cadmium yellow color scheme and I was kind of mourning the loss of it on that page. I decided, you know what, I want, I still want to do a page like that. So I left the tissue papers out, the deli papers out, and I am just ripping them, rip a strip, and then I will glue them down. Now, whether it's on tissue paper or deli paper, this goes kind of translucent, so you get that stained glass look that I love. And my goal here is to keep some of that white space in. I just want to create some bright colors on the background and some movement kind of waves on here. So as I said, this is using a lot of things that not only are in my stash, but actually are things that I had pulled out for other projects and I just had them sitting on my table. And so using what's right there limits your choices so you don't get bogged down by too many ideas. So that's a good way of doing it. And then you also save time because you don't have to go and file them away and put them away. So I'm just layering this up. And as you can see, when I put more pink on top of pink, you get a darker hue loving the movement here. I'm just wrapping my gel print or gel pen with saran wrap. Now I'm going to add some stamping. I re remember I said I wanted to keep the white space, but I wanted to add a little bit interest. Now this is one of the stamps from the faded type it's a Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous collection that I absolutely love and have used so much since I just recently purchased it. I got this from Ninny Snapkins. There's a link and a coupon code in the description box below. So go and check it out. So I'm adding that. Then I grab another stamp with this circle from this is from sacred geometry it's a stamperia set and again i got it from ninny's napkins and i'm stamping it now i'm not too worried that it's not perfect i'm going to stamp some of them off the page my goal here is to get some interest into the background add a little contrast with the black archival ink And I'm kind of going with that circular theme That's that leads me. Using that stamp led to something that I do later. And I'll point that out later. I'm grabbing another one from the faded type, this numbers. They are very imperfect stamping, like they're faded. And I'm kind of layering them up. I stamp on top of the stamps. and build it up. I'm not putting this on the block because that allows me to manipulate the stamp and get that imperfection. And hopefully you're loving this background as much as I am. Right now, I have not used any paint. No tube of paint has been opened. I've simply used the colored papers. So this is a great thing to take when you are going on a trip because you don't require all the wet paints and yet you can still create. So I'm now going to put some embellishments, modeling paste tissue paper, on this case, napkin. Now I created this for another project and I decided, ended up not using it. So it was sitting in my stash, but I did have the footage of me creating it. So I thought I'd include it in case. So what I'm doing is putting modeling paste through a stencil 
on to one of the excess white plies that you take off from the napkins. So don't throw those out. Then I set that aside and dry. So this is a perfect activity to do ahead of time because you don't have to wait for it to dry. It's already dry and in your stash. So in this session, I did two or three of them, which are then in my stash, ready to use at any given moment. And that saves time in the creative process. So you can do these as a build your stash activity. So this is dry and I'm just ripping them apart and placing them wherever I want to. Again, if you're taking these on a trip, you don't have to haul the modeling paste and all that. And it's the added advantage that it's dry. Now, because this is on napkin, when I use fluid matte medium on it, it's going, the white parts are going to go translucent and only the modeling paste white is going to show. This allows me to put the modeling paste wherever I want, break up the pattern however I want. It's a great technique to use. And you can do the same on tissue paper, although some tissue papers don't go quite as translucent as napkins. I'm liking the addition of this little bit of white. It ties in, you know, the stenciling of this onion blossom stencil works really well with that round stamp from Stamperia. Now, here's another thing that I had in my stash already ready to go, but again, I had the footage. I was using this rooster, or thinking about using this rooster on a recent um, bunny egg Easter um, page. I had glued it down onto copy paper after taking off the plies and cut it out. So it was just sitting in my stash, but this is the process you would go to. And you can see that it's all cut out sitting there. And the colors of that rooster seem to go really well with the colors in the background that I've created today. I wanted to use the phrase right from the beginning, let's give them something to talk about. And if I had left it as a rectangle, I could have used it. But I usually like cutting out a lot of that white. And by the time I did that, it just didn't seem to have enough presence with this particular background, with the white space that's in the background. And so I decided to go with the shorter, bolder sentiment, rise and shine. Still goes with the rooster. So typically when I go and I create sentiments for, specifically for a page, I'll do two or three, try different fonts. Now at the end, I will go over every step using my art journal prompt and process cards. I haven't done that for a while and somebody was asking, so I thought I'd bring them back. So remember that circle stamp from Stamperia that we did? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to add weight to my focal image by putting a circle behind it. So I use a lid from my coffee tin trace it with the ink tense pencil in a magenta kind of color. I'm activating that and just making a circle pop out of the background. This is a great technique and you can use any size shapes that you want. Now I'm thinking it didn't quite have enough presence. So now I'm going in with black acrylic paint in the shading acrylic, my shading technique, and just building up to make it a little bit darker. It goes well with the dark of the uh, sentiment that I'm going to put on. And now I'm just edging the page with my floating acrylic shading technique. This is making everything work together. just adding it, making it darker as I go. And you can see how that just automatically changes your background. 
so amazing. A very simple thing to do, but so, so effective. So before I glue everything down, I wanted to add a decorative border and I'm going to use this Crystal Flowers stencil to make a border. You can use any stencil. You just have to tape off the section you don't want or isolate the section you do want and then stencil the border. So look at your stencils and see which one works for a border. I'm just using black. I'm building that contrast. And quite honestly, this black paint is the only paint that I'm using on this page because everything else, the paint, it, you know, was already on those gel prints. So again, I built up, I chose to have a little bit of a half circle there to tie in with the circle that I brought out from the background to tie in with the circle stamp that's now been pushed in even further into the background. But every element resonates with another element. Liking the circles, that's what I'm pointing out there. Now, this rooster is a napkin from Ninny's Napkins. Now, if you didn't want to do a rooster, a flower could go in there overlapping that circle. Any focal image that you have could go in there, or you could just go abstract and do more circles. I'm not a big rooster chicken fan, but those colors just really worked well. And it was in my stack. It was right on my studio table, ready to be used. Now I'm using gel medium to glue this down. And the reason for that is that it, because it's on copy paper, it's a little thicker and it takes a little bit of pressure, pushing it down, pushing it down to get it to stick, but it does stick. And then I'm just going to reach under and glue down my sentiments. And you can see how using that bold font and less words really shows up against this background. And it does look like a sunrise, those colors. And you can see the close up here of all the elements and how they work together. And remember that modeling paste is also 3D. I didn't like the way the foot was sitting there, so I grabbed a piece of that pink tissue paper and glued it on just to make it look like it all was the plan. I was gonna put some pink up here and then yeah, opted not. But you can always add at different times tweak it now that you know what all the elements are. Now I'm shading around the rooster just to make that rooster stand out a little bit more. It is the focal image. And I just want it to be a little bit more forward. But I chose not to add color to this. Lots of times I overpaint go over it with a wash or gesso and paint. Here I'm just shading, keeping it simple. Once that's dry, I came back with my charcoal pencil just to add a little bit more sketchy lines to bring it out. It wasn't quite enough. And this just added a little bit more. I'm adding a little bit with the, in the feathers, just adding a little bit of sketchiness. Now the charcoal pencil I'm using at this stage because I'm not putting any wet layers on now. If this was on a canvas, I'd be sure to spray it with a fixative so it didn't smudge because charcoal will smudge. Now 
So there is the finished page. And I absolutely love how it all came together using stuff that was just laying around in my studio that now I don't have to put away. So let's go over the process using my art journal prompt and process cards. These are available for purchase at Ninny Snapkins. And I'll put a link in the description box. So I used an analogous color scheme for this. Now analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So we use the yellows to the magentas in there. And those colors are always going to work well. And then I've added black and white. That's it. I collaged gel prints. Now these gel prints were on deli paper. It could have been tissue paper. And I chose that because I love that translucent stained glass kind of look. And I just ripped them and glued them down. Then I added some details and some pattern using black archival ink and three different stamps. But I left the white space in there because I want that black and white contrast with those bold colors. I used the tissue paper modeling paste embellishment. This time I put it on a napkin, works the same way. And that adds pattern and texture and introduces again more white, that contrast. I chose to use a napkin, a napkin focal image, the rooster, which I glued on to copy paper. I used a stencil to create a black border, tying in the circle theme. I don't have a card for this, but I brought out a circle by shading the circle to add weight to my focal image and build up that circle pattern. And then I added the sentiment. I additioned a couple and chose the one that stood out the best. I shaded my focal image to make it stand out and outlined it with charcoal. And I edged the page with black. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you give this a try using tissue paper or deli paper, collage papers to make your background with black and white. It's a quick, easy way to make a background that really pops. There are close-ups. Ask me a comment. Give me a thumbs up and until next time, go get creative.